And we need to face the facts and ask the hard questions, even when we'd rather not. We need to make the time to do that with a trusted mentor and ask the questions, what is it time to let go of my, in my life and in my leadership? And if I embrace this death, what new beginnings might be waiting backstage that God has for me? Guys, today, this is it. This is this is Rebecca's last uh, leadership lunch, um, unless Luke comes back and hands me the reins, in which case uh, I might just be a little bit terrified. <laughs> but I'm sure we're all looking forward to having Luke and Rachel back on board next week. But today is our final look at the principle of principles of emotionally healthy leadership from Peter Scazzaro's book, The Emotionally Healthy Leader. And we've been working through so many of those inequalities we absolutely must work on if we're going to be great leaders. It's so much more important than what people can see is the inner work that goes on. Um, and his challenge to the whole book is for us to be completely countercultural in the way that we lead, always being led by that ever deepening relationship with Christ. And we're going to continue with that countercultural theme today with our ending of this series today with a message that I'm calling Starting with the end in mind. I think it's a very apt title because this is the last of this series um, of messages that I'm bringing to you guys um, because we're talking about endings today. And we're talking about something that I think is highly countercultural when it comes to leadership culture, talking about endings, when it's time to let things go, sometimes by choice and sometimes by circumstances and being able to approach these things in a healthy and mature way. So to be a leader really is to navigate endings, whether we accept them and grow from them or avoid them at all costs as a sign of failure is up to us. Now, I have to be honest, I definitely, before reading this book and really sitting down and thinking about it, have only ever approached endings as really a form of failure. And I think that's what our culture says about them too, that to, for something to end is for something to fail. That's not at all the case in God's kingdom. Um, as a leader, always keeping the eventual end of anything in mind is important and healthy, even as we are totally not wanting whatever we're uh, investing ourselves in to end and we're still carving out fresh vision for that ministry before us. It's still important to consider its eventual ending. Scazzera says our society doesn't teach endings. Our churches don't teach endings. Our families don't equip us to embrace endings as a part of a, the rhythm of a healthy life. When we add to that our own insecurities and fears, it seems obvious that we consider endings as interruptions to be avoided no matter what it takes. The problem is that in that process, we block the new beginnings God wants to give birth to through us. So what sort of endings are we talking about? Well, it can be really anything that can trigger a grieving process in us, whether big or small. One of the examples that Peter Scazzaro gave in the book was very close to my heart. It was when um, your church had, goes through the work of um, uh, put, putting together a new church plant. And as part of that church plant, you say goodbye to the people that you're sending off to that church plant, knowing that your relationship with them will never be the same. And I was like, oh, too right. Like, that, as well as an exciting process, was a grieving process for me and my family and probably for some of the people that we are no longer as close to down in Cessnock anymore. But he brings up other ones like the way that church culture needs to change to continue to meet the, um, uh, the culture of the community that it's in. Not a different message, same message, but different methods. And moving on from method to method can create a grieving process. It could be just an individual or a family leaving the church for bad reasons or good reasons, right? Um, but saying goodbye to individuals. It could be a new leader transitioning into a new role and having to say goodbye to an old role that they really do love, but they have to move on. It could be starting a new job and having to say goodbye to an old job, even though that's a good thing. It could be splitting a life group in two because it's grown so wonderfully big, but still that, that split in order to grow can feel like a grieving process. And of course, there are things that as leaders, we have to say um, goodbye to that hurt a whole lot more, right? They can lead to dark nights of the soul where we question everything, whether it's uh, the leaving of a longstanding leader in our church, whether it's a whole mass of people perhaps leaving our myths. It could be the closure of a particular ministry that we've really poured our hearts into. It could be an illness that we're diagnosed with. The list could go on and on, but we all know what it's like to have to be faced with a possible ending. And no matter what we do as leaders, these things are going to happen. But 
If we accept the broader culture's view of endings as failure and as to be avoided, Scazzaro says that we neglect one of the most essential tasks of leadership, which is learning how to navigate endings ourselves well so we can help others to also navigate their endings well too because they are going to happen. He says this, as Christians, we know that death is a necessary prerequisite to resurrection. To bear long-term fruit for Christ, we need to recognise that some things are going to have to die for new things to grow. If we do not embrace that reality, then we tend to live in fear. We tend to dread endings as a sign of failure rather than an opportunity to do something new. We end up mistakenly believing that our responsibilities as leaders is always to keep things going, even if they're not working. Uh, in, in fact, he says, if leaders model openness and acceptance of endings, that would help those that they lead to see endings as of normal and of value and not as failures. He says that endings do not have to be obstacles to be removed and avoided and gotten over quickly. He says there's much growth that we might miss by attempting to move on from our grief. And he gives us two questions we can ask when we're going through some of those grieving processes or we think we might be approaching a possible ending. He says, Lord, we can say, Lord, how are you using this moment to help me to depend more deeply on you? And what hidden gifts might be hidden in this process. So our challenge today to take away from this lunch is to start with the end in mind or perhaps continue whatever we're doing with a possible ending one day in mind. He says that there are four things that we can do to really make sure that we're doing this well. Number one, sounds pretty dire, right? But he says we need to accept that endings are a death. Death is never fun, right? It's something that we all have to face at some point in our lives, either ourselves or with others. But I, I know personally that when um, I had to say goodbye to my mother, it actually took me years and years to um, begin to process that properly because I over-intellectualized the process. It was like, it's okay. I know she's in heaven. It's fine. I don't have to grieve. It's okay. And I just kept pushing it down for so long, only to bubble up. It was only a couple of years ago that I actually went and got some help to process that properly because we don't need to intellectualize and move on too quickly from our endings. We don't need to pretend they don't hurt. We need to recognize they are a death. Death hurts and that's okay. We need to feel it. All emotions are okay. All behaviors are not. I teach my kids this, but all emotions are okay. And we need to face the facts and ask the hard questions, even when we'd rather not. We need to make the time to do that with a trusted mentor and ask the questions, what is it time to let go of in my life and in my leadership? And if I embrace this death, what new beginnings might be waiting backstage that God has for me? So that's number one. We need to accept that endings really are a death. Okay, moving on from that one, number two, we need to recognise that endings and waiting in the confusing in-between periods uh, often takes much longer than we think. We can't rush for the waiting uh, between endings and beginnings to be over. God's purposes in endings and losses is not simply about changing our external circumstances. By helping us to embrace endings well, he's doing something far greater in us, initiating a deeper level of transformation through us if we let him. Um, I know we've all got experiences with endings, but I would just love to share that in uh, 2017 and 2018, I was going through a whole series of endings and a massive waiting period um, where I chose to leave a job that I loved in order to prioritize my family. And man, I remember walking out of that job on that last day, just in tears, like, God, I don't know what's next. I need you to put the next step before me, right? And then the next year in 2018, uh, in the midst of trying to put my family first, I had to have a meeting with Luke and Rachel where I had to say no to continuing on with the current role that I was doing at church, which was um, uh, event management. I was like in charge of all of the, the, the events at church. Um, and I remember once again, I was in that meeting and I was crying because I didn't want to do it because I felt like I was letting everyone down. It was an ending and it needed to be grieved over. Except if I didn't say no to those two things, number one, um, I know that uh, our t- leadership team at church went on to realize that we didn't have to do events so big all the time that it was actually over exhausting our team and that we could do be an effective church in other ways and that has led to so many new births of other ideas which has been wonderful but on a personal note that led me to a period of waiting and constant prayer about what would be next to the point 
where we were eventually presented with scone as being our next step and we were able to say yes to coming up here and leading that but it was a really long like two and a half year period of waiting so endings are a death it's important to give yourself time to grieve and it's important not to rush off to the next thing we need to give the waiting its proper weight schizera says number three i'll go through these ones nice and quick uh, that we view endings and waiting it's important that we view endings and waiting as inextricably linked to our personal maturing in Christ. I think you know this in our culture. Yeah. We don't want to have endings. We want to have new beginnings all the time. We want to have uh, new stuff all the time. And um, if we uh, if we do that, we completely miss out on the inner work that he wants to be doing in us when we slow down and we deal with that inner stuff. And I know during that period of two and a half years of waiting, um, that I was just talking about, God did a massive work in my heart about relying on him and about slowing down and not having to be a doer, but being able to just be and knowing that that was a value. He's still doing that work in me. It's never done. But um, by embracing endings and embracing waiting, that work is done in us. And number four, he says, we need to affirm that endings and waitings are a gateway to new beginnings. As I hinted at earlier, um, me stepping down from the event management role at church, like it might have happened anyway. It might have been Luke and Rachel saying to me, hey, we're going to move you into a new position because we've decided that we don't need this anymore. But that would have been them initiating that ending. But that ending gave birth to new creativity, new ways of doing things. And there have been so many endings in um, the leadership of our church. Um, Luke and Rachel, I'm sure, could fill us in on so many that have given birth to new ideas. I know that in your lives personally, there have probably been a multitude of endings that, while painful at the time, gave birth to new creative things. And in a moment, I'd love for you to think about one of them if you felt like sharing a time when you had to say goodbye to something and it ended up giving birth to something wonderful and new and creative. And we know that God's making all things new. And that doesn't happen without a whole lot of initial growth and then a dying off that gives birth to something new and a constant moving up and a constant replenishing. Um, so I shouldn't say constant, an eventual replenishing, an eventual upward trend that's taking us to a whole new creation. But it goes in ebbs and flows, right? So we're on that ride, all of us, and we've got to learn to embrace it. And just to finish up, what does it really look like to start with the end in mind, right? Because we're all engaged in different ministries and it's a bit depressing to go, oh, I have to think about the end of this. I don't want to. I want to keep going. I want to build. I want to grow, right? And I think it just comes back to some of those uh, inner work principles that we were talking about earlier in this series and particularly about that praying for a heart that is indifferent to all but the will of God. So this, this thing, whatever it is that we're doing right now, it's wonderful and it's good. But is it so wonderful and good that whenever we're praying to God, like we're not even asking about what God's future direction for it is, we're just accept, we're just uh, assuming that God wants it to keep going? Or are we honestly able to, at various points in our year, able to come to him and go, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to lay this down. Help me to be indifferent to it. Help me just want to do your will. Is this what you want me to keep doing, Lord? And to honestly come to him and do that, gosh, that's hard work. But if we could do that with so many things in our lives, I think we would be surprised at what God would do through us as we remain committed to his will as our primary definition of success. So that's it. We're all done. Series over. So starting with the end in mind. We're almost done. This is the end. Um, but do you guys have anything that you would like to share about a time when there was an ending and it gave birth to something that just couldn't have taken place otherwise? I would love to know. I can say in a very similar situation to you back when um, work for me was just about being a classical musician and teaching and performing and I could not see myself really doing anything else. And then having Rachel and Luke pull me aside and say, hey, we see this in you. Um, <clears throat> we want you to consider at some stage in the future uh, the possibility of taking on the leadership of the Creative Academy. Um, and at that point in time, there was no talk of church planting or other locations or anything. It was just simply to manage the, uh, the location of Cessnock in the Academy. And just watching how God just, as you were saying, slowly just closes everything down um, to when it was, what, 2020, when I 
finished up work everywhere else and the only place I worked was at the academy um, mm. and at church so it's like yeah it's interesting how God just does that and you just go okay and I had to grieve things like giving up my own personal sport um, because it was always on Sundays um, and then the finances changed so I had to give up my golf as well because we couldn't afford those memberships and that sort of stuff as well and some of that was grieving that I had to go wait a minute God you're taking all these things away from me which I think are good for me because we always saw golf as being like our witness um because we were meeting up with people who do not go to church and it was week in week out and they would see us week in week out and two times a week sometimes and um he was just like nope nope this is not going to be for you guys and uh, yeah now we're as happy as can be really enjoying where God's got us in in his will um doing work for him so yeah, it's great. Yeah, so powerful, Natalie. And I um I really like what you shared there too, that um, you know, Luke and Rachel were the ones who called something out of you, right? Which was a seed um that could be planted in that season of um endings. Um and I think that brings us to a really important part of this, which is if if we're gonna do endings well, we have to do them in community, right? With mentors, with people we can share with, with people who will slow down and properly grieve with us and then help us to um, see what's next. Yeah, so good. Uh, and Richie, did you want to share anything? Uh, yeah, um, I, I think today's subject is really fascinating um, from the point of view that um, if you have dreams and visions, there's going to be a lot of deaths to get there. There's going to be a lot of transitions where you've got to move through things to get there. So um, to expect, to expect, like you said, you know, um, and I think when you do that, it helps you think about succession as well. Like, okay, well, okay, if I if I'm gonna, not going to do it, who's going to do it? Um, I've always been prone to depression, and um, I, I read and learned um, from a Christian writer that it is often to do with loss or perceived loss. So usually for me, it's the other way around. I get down about something, and then I have to ask myself, "Well, oh, what just died? What did I just lose?" Mm. And so I'm, I'm getting much better at the head talk of going, "Right, okay, so that's gone. So now you need to start thinking about the new things that you can now concentrate on, and that that's very, very helpful in in getting the energy, you know, to move forward." Mm. Yeah, so good. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing just also your struggles with mental health, which are shared by so many people as well. And lots of people go through that at various stages in their lives. Because, um, yeah, once again, being able to go through that in healthy community um, and dealing with um, the the endings um, in a healthy way uh, in community and dealing, help you know, um, getting help for um, our different mental health needs in community is, is such an important part of this process as well. Well, Thank you guys for joining me for what, what could be a bit of a depressing, like final leadership talk. I got to the end of Peter Scazzaro's book. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is a bit sobering. But of course, it, that's the worldly way of thinking of this, that it's, oh, endings, no, because it's the new beginning, right? It's, there are so many new beginnings for me, for you, Natalie, for you, Richard, and for everybody. There are so many new beginnings that can be, so fruitful if we're willing to accept them in full rather than being fearful and trying to run from them so that's my prayer for you guys as we finish that um from this series you guys would be inspired to pray that prayer of indifference and to keep asking god for fresh direction and uh, to get ready for whatever new beginning might be there for you hopefully not too soon because i love you both very much <laughs> but, but in its season whatever that looks like yeah all right, guys, you guys have a wonderful rest of your lunch and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Meg.